good morning, everyone. It's good to have you here this morning. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer, then we'll begin our study, okay? Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for this opportunity to gather together in the house of the God. And I was reminded what David said. I was glad when he said unto you, I was going to the house of the Lord. Once like a bird in prison, I dwell. Word of God. And that Lord God, the most important thing in the world is the Word of God and the study of it. And so, Father God, we just uh, ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be amongst us this morning as we proclaim this word, Father God, and throughout our worship services and also the message that you prepared to, uh, to, uh, to the pastor to give us, Father, this morning. And we ask you all for it all in the name of, precious name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. Uh, if you want to turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, we're continuing our study here, which will probably be in the book, I was thinking, we'll probably be in the Jody was asking me the other day how long we're going to be in the book of Hebrews, and I said probably be about a year or so. <laughs> so, but we're moving right along here. And uh, last week we were talking about verse 12 of Hebrews 3, 12, chapter 3, verse 12. Uh, just a quick uh, review on that. He says here, but take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an, e an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. You know, it's quite possible for the believer to quit believing and therefore depart from the living God. And in fact, and if that is done, then that person, and he remains in that state of unbelief, the only conclusion is they are lost forever, for eternity. And see, this is the warning that Paul, throughout the whole book of Hebrews, and my study of so far of it, is, uh, is just that. Hold on to your faith. Be, remain steadfast in the faith. Don't lose heart. Don't give up now. Not, now's the time to not be apathetic or be lazy or depart from the living God. Now more than ever, we need the Lord, don't we? It's particularly in the times that we're living in. So, but then that which, and so in verse 13, he says here, but exhort, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Wow. Don't, isn't any wonder Paul says in verse 13 to keep, he, the, the previous verse he's talking about departing, quit believing, because if you do, you'll lose your soul. So the antidote for that is exhort one another. Exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So it actually, it, so that ex, to, work, one, to exhort one another daily means to, it's a constant frequency, constantly, constantly exhorting one another. We are to exhort one another on a daily basis, meaning warn each other about the possibility of deceitfulness of sin. We're to warn one another. Amen. So the preacher and the teacher are supposed to preach and teach the cross of Christ. What I'm doing right now is exhorting you. What the pastor's been going, going to do later this morning is exhorting you, isn't it? Same thing. We're exhorting you to keep the faith. Don't lose your faith. Don't throw it aside like the Israelites of old. And we know they what happened to them, don't we? When we, you, when we as believers discuss Calvary, we're discussing this most, the single most important part of the gospel. I'm going to say that again. When you're discussing the cross and what he did for us, what Christ did at the cross, you're discussing the most important thing in the gospel. Without, the, without Calvary, there is no gospel. There is no gospel. And if without what he did, you and I are doomed. There is no salvation. There is no sanctification. And there certainly is no glorification. We're all destined for a devil's hell. You know, the only thing that separates you and I, the believer, from, uh, from eternal hell is faith, our faith in Christ. Do you realize that? That's the only thing you've got. That's the only thing we have is our faith in Christ. Without that, without he, what he did for us, and he didn't have to do it. He didn't do it for the angels. He didn't do it for himself. He didn't do it for the Heavenly Father. He did it for you and I. He did it for us, my friends. How much more should we praise him for it? Amen. Praise God. That's, that's what amazes me. That we preach the cross here, and we teach it, but little people don't praise Him for it. 
We need to shout the praises of God because I'm going to tell you something. Without that, we're destined to a devil's hell. Go ahead, Pastor. What you just said that, you know, what Christ has done for us and we receive that by faith and that's all it is. That to be saved from a, an eternal hell forever. Yeah. If that does not change your life, the <laughs> thought that what he's done, if that yeah. doesn't cause you to want to seek him, right. to praise him, to yeah. spend time talking to him in prayer, I really do have to question if you are saved. Can I, I, I can't. I adopt. agree, brother. There's got to be something wrong with someone yeah. who says, you know, I just believe in Jesus and, you know, go the merry way. Uh, uh, I, I, I really do believe that uh, people that are not serious, and yeah. it's like today we're having this business meeting. Yeah. This is God, Christ's church, and we all have yeah. a responsibility to take care of it. Yeah. And if you're not willing to take part in that, how can, how can you say you even know him? Right, right. It's just, if you're just going to come occasionally and don't care. Yeah. When you need to find a church and there be part of, make it your life, you know, make church. Yeah. This, this is, I want, not only do I want to be part of it, I want to help so I can reach others through it. Right, exactly. But I just see a lot of very apathetic and complacent people today. I don't know about you, but I see it. Oh, I see and it, yeah. Very concerning. Yeah. I've been doing this yeah. for yeah. over thir almost 30 years. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. And you know, Pastor, I was, you brought up something that I was thinking about yesterday. I was thinking about John three sixteen. <laughs> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. And my thinking was this. Uh, people say that prayer. I believe in John 3, 16. I'm a John 3, 16 Christian. Yeah, right. And that's all there are. Yeah. <laughs> they don't, and there's no change life. I said the prayer of John. I believe in John 3, 16, and I'm saved. Yeah. They believe that. There are millions that are sitting in the pews in the churches today that believe that. <laughs> but, you know, you have to read the rest of the whole chapter there. For God sent not His Son, only Son, to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved. Amen. So you have to read the whole thing. But, you know, they say that prayer, and they live, they live a loose life. Live loosely, if that's a word, I'm, is that the correct term? Live loose, uh, uh, no, uh, no sense of purpose. There's no direction in their lives. They're going, from, going like a wind-blown leaf, you know. There's no consistency, and that's what we're talking about. I talked about that Thursday night, the board. Consistency. We need consistency in the Word of God. We need consistency in study of the Word of God. We need consistency in prayer. We need consistency in attending the house of God. I'm preaching to the church. I'm, I'm, talk I'm talking to the choir this morning, aren't I? Amen. Look, well, just look at the seats. Look at the seats. They're empty seats. Why is everybody in here? And I'm sure the pastor is going to address that later today. But why there's no consistency in the body of Christ. And I'm, I see that. And it's not just here. I'm not talking about just here. It's everywhere. But I'm only responsible for here. I'm, my, 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 I'm, I'm responsible for you, you people. I'm responsible for teaching the, the word of God to you. And those who are watching as well online. I don't know how I got off on that. <laughs> when, you, when believers discuss the cross, they're discussing the most, single most important thing in the Word of God. If they understand that, then every other doctrine, you will fall right in, you'll understand the gospel. Every other doctrine, because every other doctrine falls on that, doc, that foundational doctrine. But if you get off that foundation and go on to other things, you'll fall. Your you're foundation is on sand, not on the rock. And what happens when the, when the storm comes? And storms do come for all of whether you're saved or you're not. We do all have storms. We all, they come. Are you going to fall when that storm comes? When wind, wa the waves, the wind and the waves beat upon your house? Are you going to fall or are you going to stand? So we need to be sure. We need to, we may, we need to make sure. Do we really believe? That was the question I asked myself yesterday. Do I really believe? Do you really believe? Well, you know, that's something we, only I can answer that for myself, and only, you can only answer that for yourself. But do you really believe? Do you really believe the gospel? Do you really believe that Jesus died for you? You know, that's, that's, that should be the most important question you should ask yourself. Do, you, do I believe? And uh, that takes a self-examination on your part. You have to deep within your heart. Am I just going through the motions, 
or do I really believe? Am I just doing, being, practicing churchianity or am I practicing Christianity? Yeah. Too much churchianity. Now, this wasn't in my notes today. I'm just telling you, I preach off the top. That's off right off the top of my head here. Are we practicing churchianity or are we practicing Christianity? If they understand that, if you understand the doctrine of Christ and what he did for you on the cross, and then, it's much, then the gospel, the Bible, is much easier to understand. Yeah. I can tell you that. I've, I've read this Bible. I've read the Bible through a number of times over the years. I'm reading, I'm, in fact, that's what I'm doing to, to this day. And I, the more I see it, I said, my goodness, I can see why now Calvary is the foundational doctrine of all doctrine. Without Calvary, this Bible is just another philosophical book. But the Calvary makes the difference. And there's nothing more important than the Word of God. And that's why we must take it to heart. We need to, to, to ask the Lord to help us to understand the Word of God. When you study, ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to help reveal that to you. You know, He will do that. He will do that. I can tell you that right now. And when you, when you, see, when something, you see something that you brought to your attention, write it down. I'll write it down because I forget. But it, it, you write it in your Bible or, read it, or write it on a sheet of paper and write it down. And, and, all, and God will show you some things about that. You know, I was talking to, uh, I believe, Brother, Brother Dale this morning. And we were talking about the Word of God. You know, you, you look at a certain scripture in the Bible, and it's like you can find other scriptures to pertain to that scripture as well. It's like a spoke on a wheel. It's all, they all, it's all comes together, you know. So I, you know, I could, I could spend one, I could teach on one scripture and put five or six other scriptures along with that that ties in with that one scripture. And you, so that's, that's how, that, that's what makes the Word of God so amazing to me. It just, it just fascinates me like that. I just, man, you start thinking about, the, when you read the Word, there's a certain word in the scripture that'll click in your mind. And I'll look it up, I'll look in the concordance, like partakers, for example. I'll look up the word partakers in the concordance, and there, how many other scriptures relate to that about partakers? So it's very interesting, you know, to me. I, it just, it makes you hungry for the truth. Yeah. And it becomes, it's, uh, it becomes solidified in your heart. Amen? He says here uh, that we must take it to heart, asking the Lord to help us understand it. Lord, help me understand the Word of God. Help me reveal it, Holy Spirit, what you want me to know so that I can share it with other people. Amen. Amen. While it is called today, while it is called today, that means we're to take this to heart today, not tomorrow, not next week, not 10 years from now, not, don't live on yesterday's food, you live on today's food. You know, we don't, you don't want old, you don't want old manna, you want fresh manna, don't you? Amen. And there's, and you know, you're right, you can hope for tomorrow, that's good, but you, there's no food for tomorrow. You've got to believe for that for the day. That's what the Israelites in the wilderness did. They didn't give them enough food for the belief for him for that day. You know? And then on the, and the day before the Sabbath, you were to gather twice as much because you couldn't gather any food or manna on the day of the Sabbath. So you were to gather two omers, two quarts of, of uh, I think it was two quarts, uh, of manna in the wilderness to cover for the next day, for the Sabbath. Amen. So, it's, he always, it's, it's faith for today. It's faith for today. You have to believe for today. Amen. So, it, that's, because that's when it really counts. And he, so we must, you and I must answer for today. He says, lest, ver, continue on verse 13, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. This actually says the deceitfulness of the sin. This actually should be translated. There's the definite article, the, is in front of the word sin. It should have been translated, the deceitfulness of the sin. And what is the sin? It's the rejection of Jesus Christ. That's the word, unbelief. Yeah, that's it, unbelief. The sin of unbelief, the sin of apostasy. That's, see, it's specific sin, and that's unbelief. You, you don't believe in what Cal, you don't believe in Calvary. Amen. You, don't, you reject the sacrifice of Christ. And sad to say, the modern church is rejecting it, aren't they? Yes, we just look at what we've been looking at on Wednesday nights, the, 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 all the junk's going on in the modern church today. 
They've rejected Calvary. And so he's speaking of a particular sin in his regards to forsaking Christ and what he did on the cross for you on, on the hill of Golgotha. It is not possible to know Christ, at least the Christ of glory, unless one knows him in the realm of his great sacrifice. That's how you get to know him. It's impossible to know him unless you know him as the Christ of the cross. Amen. So it must be always, like the Apostle Paul said, Jesus Christ and him crucified. He didn't just say Jesus Christ. He said, and Jesus Christ and him crucified, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. So you can't separate Christ from the cross. They're, they're synonymous. They're, they're one and the same. You can't do it. And what's, what happens if you do that, then you're preaching another Jesus. Another Jesus being preached. What are we seeing today? Another Jesus is being preached. They don't preach Christ of the cross. Amen. It's Christ and him crucified. Man. We can't think of Jesus any other manner other than that. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4, Paul says, For if we, he who comes preaching another Jesus, whom you have not preached, or if you have received another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. And that's the sin of the modern church today. They're bearing with these false teachers and prophets coming in their churches, espousing all kinds of junk. Amen? And the, the Corinthian church had tolerated this. These false apostles coming, bringing in another gospel, another Jesus, not the Jesus of Calvary, but another Jesus. This means, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the cross of Christ is the dividing line between the apostate church and the true church. I'm going to say that again. The cross of Christ is the dividing line between the apostate church and the true church. That's it. You can't come to any other conclusion. So... Where, are you gonna, where do you stand? You have to ask yourself, well, do I stand with apostate church or do I stand with the true church? Do I believe in Calvary or do I not believe in Calvary? If you don't believe, then you're, then you, you're on the side of the apostate church. If you believe in Calvary, then you're on the side of the true church. I choose to be on the side of the true church. You all too? Amen? Praise God. This presents itself a fearful prospect considering the modern church almost knows nothing about Calvary, about the cross. We are, he says in verse 14, Hebrews 4, 14, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. I'm going to read that again. Verse 14, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the Lord, unto the end. So that, that's speaking of Romans 6, verses 3 through 5. One of my favorite passages in the Bible. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into, into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. In other words... I died with him. When he died, you and I died. Not physically, but spiritually, we died. In the eyes of God, we died with Christ. We were buried with him. When he was buried, we were buried in that tomb. Our sins were buried in that tomb. Thank goodness. Past, present, and future. Buried and forever gone in the sea of forgetfulness. And we, when he was raised from the dead, his resurrection becomes our resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to celebrate that in a couple of weeks, aren't we? You know, that's the, that's the resurrection verse right there. Amen. Romans 6, 3 through 5. So he did all this for us. Like I said earlier, he didn't do it for anybody else. He didn't, do it, he didn't do it for the angels or God or himself. He did it for you and I. All this, what I just read to you in Romans 6, 3 through 5, he did it for you and I. And we're to register our faith in that, what he did for us. When we do this in the mind of God, we have been literally baptized into the death of Christ, which the Apostle Paul brings out in verse 3. Amen? In other words, God looks, as a, he looks at us as if we did this thing ourselves, even though it was not done by us and certainly could not be done by us. Representative man. 
He represented us. He was our substitute. And he paid that for us. Amen. So when he looks at us, he sees the blood of Christ. Amen. Covered in the blood. Amen. Romans 6, 4, that we says that we are also buried with him by baptism. We've been baptized unto his death. Amen. We must understand he uses the word baptism. Now speaking, he's not speaking water baptism. You know, we've been baptized into Christ. Water baptism is just an outward uh, proclamation of what happened took place in your heart. It doesn't, like I said before, it doesn't save you. All it is is just proof positive that you've been saved. That you've accepted Christ as your Savior. It's just an outward, pop, it's an outward pop, pr proclamation of what Christ has done for you and your belief in that work that He did, that finished work. And that's all it's, a, it's the testimony. Outward, it's an outside testimony. You're testifying of Christ. So you, if you can't base your faith in that, your faith has to be in the finished work. Do you understand that? It has to be in that finished work. Your faith can't be in his healings. It can't be in his teachings. Your faith can't be in his miracles because all those are wonderful. As good as they were, they were wonderful. But they didn't save you. They didn't save the Israelites of old, did they? They didn't save the Jewish hierarchy of Israel. In fact, they crucified him because they, they hung him on the tree. Praise God. And so, therefore, our faith has to be in what he did on that, on that tree, what he did on the Calvary. Amen. On the cross. You know, we've been baptized in his death. I like this illustration. A ship which is sunk in the ocean. The water is in the ship, and the ship is in the water, which describes baptism. Amen? So it's also a union of the branch to the vine. We are the branch. He is the vine in John 15, verses 1 through 5. And we abide in him. John 14, verse, uh, John 14, verse 20 says, At that day, at that day, speaking of after the Calvary, after the cross, when the Holy Spirit could come into the lives of believers to abide, you shall know that I'm in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. That's, that's good, isn't it? Let me say that again. At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so if, we, if we hold fast our, be, our beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto the, continue with verse 14, if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto the Lord, means that in order to be saved, we have to be, place our faith totally in that, in the, and, and what He did for us. Okay? But also, we have to stay saved. And that's where we drop the ball. We have to continue in that faith. Don't let go. Steadfast. It's one, it's one thing to begin something. It's quite another to finish. And so we want, to, we, we want to finish well, don't we? And we have to continue in the faith. Continue. Continue therein. What did Jesus say? If you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Yeah, I, I think I said it right. Uh, if you continue, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. If you quit, God, God won't quit if you don't quit. I just heard that somebody said that. I heard of somebody on the uh, message this morning. If you don't quit, God won't quit. <laughs> but if you quit, He quits. So don't quit. Amen. So that could... <clears throat> The commencement or beginning of the Christian life, although absolutely necessary, the beginning is absolutely necessary, within, within itself is not sufficient. You can't live on that. You gotta, that's what I was talking about in John 3.16. Well, I was talking about that. Remember that? They say, I said the John's 3.16 prayer, but they're not continuing their faith in that. They think it's because I said a prayer, I can live any way, way I want to. Baloney. You can't live like that. You've got to live holy before Him and be obedient. I, you're not abiding in the vine when you live like that, are you? You're not continuing the Word. You're, your branch has been broken off, gathered by, by the wood pile, and burn, burned up. Amen. That's, that's, those, are, those are the kind of branches that get thrown out and get burned. Amen. So there has to be a continuation, a completion. Where it refers to a day-to-day, moment-by-moment walk with the Lord. 
It's not sporadic. It's not one day here and a few days later. Just, uh, oh, I'll, I'll get in the Word. You know. No, you, make, you commit yourself to it. You discipline yourself. Amen? Make a daily habit of it. You know? and, uh, but you don't base your faith on those disciplines. Do you see the difference? You base your faith on what He's done, not what you're doing, what He's done for you. Amen? So you have to continue in the faith. Continue and walk a moment by moment, walk by, every day with Him. Walk with Him in personal holiness and righteousness. Amen. So we have to do that on a daily basis. Our faithfulness is critical. He's faithful, isn't He? And, but our faith, so uh, it's, it, his, faith, his faithfulness is not in question. It's our faithfulness that's in question. Amen. So in other words, the Lord will not forsake us. We won't forsake Him. Like I said, if you don't quit, he won't quit. And no way does that mean the gospel is of works, but it definitely does mean the human responsibility is involved. Just like I said, we have responsibility. We can't shirk our responsibility. We can't get, be lazy. We're to take a firm stand, not forsaking or apostatizing. Uh, to begin great is great, but within itself it's not enough. We must finish the race in order to gain the prize. What did Paul say uh, in Philippians? And turn with me. I got a couple of scriptures. I, wonder, I read this early this morning. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Paul addresses this as well. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. He says here, 9, 24. If everybody's there. He says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. In other words, in these athletic contests, we see that only one, one, one person wins. Only one person wins. He gets the prize. He gets the crown. But in this contest, this race we're running, everybody wins. We all get the crown, don't we? If you continue in the faith. If you, if you remain steadfast unto the faith. Amen? So there are no losers. There are no losers unless you want to be one and quit. So no losing. Amen. Don't quit. Another one, Philippians 3, verses four, verse 14. I was reading this earlier this morning. For Philippians 3, 14. This is what Paul writes. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark. See, that's, that should be our goal, isn't it? If it's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for us. Amen. I press toward that mark. Amen. I, I have a moral and I have a spiritual target. I have a target. Amen. And for the prize of the high calling. And you know what that prize is? You being Christ-like. Don't you want to be more Christ-like every day? Don't you want to be? I want to be like, more like Christ every day. Just be more Christ-likeness. More like Him to represent Him to a lost and dying world. Amen. Not be the rest of the world. You know, it's nothing more shameful to me than a Christian says he's saved and he lives like the world. What a testimony. And that's, we got too much to that in the body of Christ today. The word Christian don't mean anything like it used to in the years and gone by. You know, you, call, you tell somebody you're a Christian, doesn't, it doesn't, because it's, we've, we've been lax and, and acting like it and living like it. Am I right, Pastor? You know, we've been lax. And therefore, you, I'm a Christian. That, let me see how you live. How do how you live? Are you living it? Are you living it? It's one thing to espouse it. It's another thing to live it. But he says, I press for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And all of this is possible. What I just read to you in verse 14 is all possible because of Calvary. You see that without Calvary, there is no prize. There is no mark for us to reach toward. We're all doomed. Amen. So everything, I don't care what it is, every benefit that we have in Christ comes as a result of what Christ did for us. He's the means by which, our, the cross is the means by which we receive everything from God, whereas Christ is the source, the cross is the means. It's the means by which everything we receive from, I don't care what it is, your salvation, your healing, your deliverance, your wisdom from God, peace with God, peace of God, 
saved from the wrath of God, your imputed righteousness, your imputed holiness, everything, gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, everything. I don't care what it is. Your spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus are all as a result of Calvary. It's, it, it's, it's, you can't get away from it. You can't, walk, you can't get away from it. As people say, well, you talk too much about the cross. How can you? It's impossible. You got, it's impossible to talk about. I, they're food, they don't under, well, you know, we hear people say that because they don't understand Calvary. They don't understand Calvary. That's why they say those things. They don't understand the prices of faith. I'm going to guarantee you, when you start understanding Calvary, and I didn't know this seven, eight years ago, what I'm telling you today. I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I've just learned this in the last seven, eight years. But it's changed my life. It's changed my life. I don't think the way I do. I'm not perfected yet, but by no means. I've got a long ways to go. But I'm, I'm, I'm pressing toward that mark, toward the prize of the high calling in God, in Christ. I want to be more Christ-like each and every day. I want the Holy Spirit to work inside of me to help me develop that fruit. And that's, what I'm, that's my daily prayer, to help develop fruit of the Spirit in my life, to be more Christ-like. You know, because I, I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to just be an old, every old everyday, everyday average Christian that just lives sloppily and, oh, you know, have an attitude about you know, I want to. I want to be. I want to be perfected. <laughs> Am I right? Not perfect. I said perfected. I'm not perfect. There's no sense. There's no such thing as sinless perfection. There's no such thing. The Bible doesn't teach sinless perfection. But we're being perfected, aren't we? Oh man, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Oh, I lost my place. <laughs> I get excited up here. I'm going to tell you what. You, get, you start talking about Calvary, it, it, just, it just turns me on. I get turned on to this. I just, I am so thankful. I am so thankful. If I had one thing to be thankful for, other than what he did for me on the cross, I'm so thankful he delivered me out of that false doctrine. So, so those few years back. I'm so glad I got out of the way of that junk. And I threw all that stuff away in the garbage can. And I'm so thankful I don't walk in that mess anymore. And I'm, a, and I'm so thankful that God has used me to proclaim the truth to you all. I didn't, I'm on seven, eight years ago, I didn't even dream of this. I had no idea what I was getting into. But I'm telling you what, I'm so thankful for what I've learned. And it's helped me exponentially. It has helped me, and I've got a long ways to go. But I'm telling you what, I'm more excited today than I was, ever was back then. And I just, it just, you just like, you got born again again. You know, I got born again again. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's what it feels like sometimes. The light got turned on, you know. And uh, but praise God. He says here in verse 15, going back to Hebrews 4, 15. Oh, man, where am I at? Let me get back to there. Yeah. I, just, I get off on these rabbit trails, you know. Her, Hebrews 4. Uh, 15 okay while it is said today if you will hear his voice oh my goodness in it more don't we need to hear his voice don't we need to and not harden your heart harden not your heart harden not your hearts as in the as in the provocation oh didn't Israel provoke the Lord because of unbelief so the sin of unbelief the sin of apostasy uh, do you think it's possible for the church to harden their heart? If he, if he instruct, you know, he's talking, you know, Paul is talking to new covenant believers. You know that, don't you? He's not, he's talking to the new covenant. These are, he's talking to believers. He's not talking to the sinner. He's talking to believers. And it's just as relevant for us today as it was them back then. But our confidence has to remain steadfast in Christ and the cross. Amen. So he said, he's repeating here in this verse, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. That's a repeat of verses 7 and 8 of this chapter. It says the same thing again in the, the, the verses we uh, talked about earlier. It's a repeat of 7 and 8. So that tells you if something's repeated twice, it must, once is important enough, but twice, I think we better take heed to it. And if it's repeated more than twice, I think we doubly need to. We better, if it's repeated three or four more times, my goodness, we better take heed to it. Don't you think the Holy Spirit's trying to impart something to us? 
that we need to learn to pay attention to something and look at it. You know, don't, it's like he's flashing a warning. Warning, 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 warning. Will Smith, you know, like the, like the robot lost in space. Yeah, Will, <laughs> Will Rob, yeah, that's right. Will Robinson. Yeah, right. <laughs> warning, warning, warning. I remember that. Amen. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit's telling us. He's, that's what he's warning us. Warning, warning, warning. You know, watch out. There's a, the road down the road. Is, is, you, if you continue down that road, you're going to fall off the cliff. You're going to fall. You'll drive off the cliff. We don't want to drive off the cliff into our utter destruction. Amen. He says here. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Harden not your heart. While it is said today, if you, will hear, if you will hear his voice. this No, actually, this is the third time he tells us this. Oh, my Lord. Today. If he, so it does emphasize the fact that, is present when the God, it's, that it is the present when God's voice is heard. We need to hear him presently. Today. Right now. This shows us how serious the matter is. We must hear and obey his voice and do so promptly. Not when we feel like it. Amen. The modern church has so much religious racket going on that it can't hear his voice and more than likely doesn't even want to. Amen. Which is why the condition it's in. Yeah, amen. You know, we shouldn't ask people what they want the preacher to hear. You know, I've heard this before. I said, you know, they take a survey of what the people want to hear, these seeker-friendly churches. They, they take, is that right, Pastor? That's right. Yeah. They want a survey. What, what do we want the preacher to preach on today? Does it an ear-tickling message? Or did, so they... That's one thing we will never do here. We did a, we're doing a survey today. Some of you got one, but it's not, it's not one question, what do you like to hear? Yeah, right, right. I, I figured that was, I knew. Uh, you're you're going to get what we believe God wants us, yeah. us to teach. Yeah. You know, this is not, you know, this is not Burger King. You can't have it your own way. Yeah, know? it's not, it's like uh, Golden Corral. You don't cherry pick with your food there. You eat the whole meal, praise God. You either take it all. You don't, you don't, you don't chew one thing and spit out the other. Amen. So we, we ingest the whole thing. Amen. And so you can't have just dessert. You can't live on dessert. It'll, make you, it'll, it'll kill you. Plus you'll be bloated and overweight. So you need vegetables. You need the meat of the Word of God. And you don't, can't feed on milk. Then, Pastor, we talked about that last week, feeding on the milk of the Word. That's for babies. We need to grow up in Christ. Babies feed on milk. But we are adults. We feed on the meat of the word. Amen. Which we'll get about later on in our study in, the Hebrew, in Hebrews. So we feed on the word of God, which is the meat. Well, I want meat. I don't want no baby food. I don't want, I don't want bottled milk. Amen. Praise God. Harden not your heart <coughs> is in the provocation. So this is the third time the Holy Spirit refers to possibly the heart being hardened. He continues to use Israel as an example. Paul, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, isolates the wilderness experience in Israel's history, which, which the people heard his voice. They heard him directing them to enter and possess the land. But what happened? What happened? Do you recall when, when uh, Moses sent out the ten spy, or 12 spies? And I believe it's in the book of Numbers, chapter 13, if my memory serves me right. But anyway... And they sent out the 12 spies, and they saw the land, and it was full of giants, and the walled cities, large walled cities, and these 10 spies that went out with them. And you know, it's a funny thing. We don't even know their names, do we? You, I, I guarantee you, if you tell me all the 10 names, I bet you not one of you can tell me the 10 names that went out with Joshua and Caleb. We remember Joshua and Caleb, didn't we? We remember their names. They're the men of faith. Praise God. Don't you want to be counted among those who believe, like Joshua and Caleb? Amen. Praise God. We don't want to be them ten that nobody knows about, and they're probably dead. And they're, well, they're dead now, and they're gone into hell. Yeah. They're in hell today. Do you know that? And along with the two million, three million other Israelites that followed with them, they're in hell today. They're suffering because of unbelief, because of the sin of unbelief. They apostatized. And don't think for a moment that because they died and you turn around in unbelief, you won't suffer the same fate. We will suffer the same fate if we don't continue the faith. We can't be. I'm telling you, my friends, I believe the Holy Spirit right now is telling this church today it's time to wake up, to, to quit being lazy, and to wake up, wake up from your slumber. 
Amen. Awake to righteousness and sin not. You're not there yet, but the next verse tells us exactly what you just said. Oh, I didn't? Okay. Exactly. Amen. Because Amen. when you hear the truth of God's word being proclaimed, uh -huh. and you're sitting there looking at your watch and thinking, isn't it about time to get out of here? I got more important things to do. And there's one thing that I'm, I'm not, I won't tolerate is when people will say, well, you know, the services go too long. But you have no problem sitting two and a half, three hours in a movie theater or right. watching a movie for two and a half hours or sitting in a restaurant right. waiting to get your food for an hour and a half right. and, all, and all that. There's something wrong when you hear the word of God and you're worrying about getting out of here and you do not do what God's word says. You've hardened your heart, and you're hardening your heart by doing that. Yeah, uh-huh. And you're heading in the same direction. I'm heading the red direction. Yeah, brother. Yeah, thank you, brother. But you know what? It, 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 hardening the heart is a gradual process. It doesn't happen all at once, all of a sudden. It doesn't happen that way. It's a gradual thing. Oh, I'll let it slip a little. I'll, I'll read the scripture today. I have a couple of, you know, I'll, I don't, I'll lay it aside today. I'll pick it up tomorrow. And the tomorrow comes, and you don't do it then. You know, I don't think it's that important for me to be at uh, Sunday. I'm going to skip home. I'm going to stay home and watch church on TV. I need a break. I felt like I stepped on some toes. I need a break. Just one thing. Go ahead, Pastor. We don't live stream our services for people to stay home and watch it. Right. Oh, that's, that was, yeah, that thank you, brother. That yeah. is not for you. That is for people who They're do, disabled. Not have, do not have a, well, even those who do not have a remnant church. Right. <clears throat> I have had several write me and say, thank you for Abundant Life Fellowship. We do not, I can't find a church like yours where I live. Even people over there, and I told you we had a guy from England that writes occasionally and says, awesome, I love the teaching. If you live here and you, you, this is your church, don't stay home and watch it. Now, if you're sick, yeah, yeah you bet. Yeah. You know, if you can't get here because, you know, your job, and you, you know, then by all means, watch us later on YouTube. But mm -hmm. if you're sitting home, say, I just don't feel like going. Because you're supposed to be here to help, not just listen. Yeah. You're supposed to be part of this ministry. Absolutely. To reach to souls and help us disciple yeah. the saved. Amen. Yeah, we need help. We need we need people here. But you know, like I said, it's a it's a gradual process. It's it's a, apostasy is is a gra it happens in gradually. It doesn't come on you all of a sudden. You start thinking I'm gonna be lax a little here or there. I'm gonna tell you something. The devil will seize that moment. He'll take it. He you know he'll take and run with it a mile long. He'll run with it. He won't just say, oh, okay, I'll let him do it. No, you can't do it. You can't, you can't be lazy. You have to be diligent. You have to put in effort. Like I said earlier, we have a human responsibility. We have a responsibility to the gospel. We have a responsibility to know the word enough to share it with other people. Amen? Proclaim the gospel. Amen. So he says here, if the Holy Spirit warns us three times in one chapter, he's three times he's warning us in this chapter about the danger of hardening the hearts. Then we certainly should understand that the distinct possibility of such, concerning what is at stake, which is the loss of our souls, we should take heart to what's being said. The Holy Spirit uses the unbelieving generation in the wilderness as an example, which the boy at the borders of Canaan refused to follow Joshua and Caleb, just like I was saying, into the promised land, but chose to take the advice of the ten, of the ten that murmured in unbelief, and it was that lack of faith. God in God and in His power to deliver them and their faith in Him that gave and they, to give them the victory over the giants and all other particular situations, and that was the provocation spoken of, and all those people followed those ten and their to their eternal doom right to this very day, and how the screaming and crying, I wished I'd have believed, I wished I'd have believed Joshua and Caleb. Do you don't think that's the worst thing in, to being in hell is the the sin of regret? You regret it. Can you imagine regret? You heard the forever. gospel? Yeah, forever. forever. You always have it. it remind you. You'll never get out. You'll never get out. There's no hope. There's no parole in, in hell. There's no, you, there's, you know, I can get out in a thousand. If you thought, well, you'll be out in a thousand years. I can. No, you know, I'm, not, I'm talking about more than a thousand years. I'm talking about for eternity. There is no reprieve. There is no purgatory in hell. There's no purgatory. It's either heaven or hell. The Bible doesn't talk, doesn't speak of purgatory. Amen. So it's for eternity, and those people are crying out, those two million more or so people crying out there in the hill. Just look, if you don't believe that, read Luke, the, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, the rich man and Lazarus. I guarantee you, he's, he's, and that's a true story. That's not no parable, it's a true story. 
And I guarantee this very day, this very moment, like right now, right this moment, he's crying out and hit, crying out. I wish I'd have believed. I wish I'd have helped that poor Lazarus and, and, and been a more of a benefit to him, share the, listen to the gospel he was preaching. I wish I'd have done things so much differently. But then, you know, on, this, on that side of heaven, uh, there's no other hope. You're, when you're dead, there's no other hope. When you died without Christ, there is no reprieve. There's no second chance. You got a chance here right now. That's why we implore you. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the day of time. Now is the time of God's favor. We got to accept Christ now and walk in Him now, not tomorrow, because there may not be an open tomorrow for you. Amen. Praise God. I'm gonna pick up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there, and we'll pick up on verse uh, uh, 16 next Sunday. But praise God, let's pray and we'll continue our services. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord God. And I pray right now for the, your continued presence, Lord, in our worship services. We lift up our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. And I ask you for the continued presence on our pastor, Father. Anoint him with the truth, Lord, so he can proclaim the word that you've to told him to preach, Lord. And help us to be obedient to that word. In his precious name, I do pray. Amen and amen. Good to see you all this morning. We're going to start a little early. Because